My name is Melissa Miller. I'm senior producer at 2K, working on Duke Nukem Forever. I think that Duke has a lot going for it that uh, a lot of the current games, like, yeah, there's definitely been an evolution in, in the first-person shooter genre since Duke 3D came out. Um, but at the same time, like, a lot of where it's gone has been, um, you know, uh, people and, and, and development teams who are trying to achieve a more mature tone, which is awesome. I, tr I worked on the Bioshock 1 and 2, like I get that and I think that that's awesome that there are people out there trying to raise uh, the, the, the quality level like that um, um, of the just games in general. But there is something to be said for a game that sole purpose is just absolutely to have fun. And it's not about, you know, trying to prove some kind of innovation, you know, to stand out from the crowd. It's just, no, this is just fun. And that's the end of it. And as well as having a character who is so unapologetic and balls out about uh, the, you know, an un-PC, like, there's just something really, really compelling and attractive about that type of, of personality, in addition to one that kicks ass, as much as Duke does. Um, so that, you know, it's just this combination of, of even though Duke is this, this character, um, you know, who in, in video games year, years is very old, it, he, feels, he feels fresh and new because there's just nothing like that out right now. In addition to the gameplay, who, which has so much variations. When was the last time you played a first person shooter that had puzzles? You know? And Duke doesn't just have puzzles. Duke has all like driving and 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 machine guns and everything. And there's just so much about it. In addition to the humor and the larger than life personality of Duke, Vegas is the perfect uh, environment for that because you know this is where um, uh, this is where big name people like come and just you know live this life of luxury, um, and you know him. Uh, you, you know, basically leveraging his um, his popularity for having saved the uh, Earth into becoming a successful businessman with multiple franchises. Like that's that's pretty funny in and of itself. And you know, he he here's Duke. This this you know he kicks ass, you know, and um, and sent the aliens running and and saved the Earth. But yes, he's got Duke Burger, and yes, he's got the Lady Killer Casino, <laughs> and like that's a, that type of stuff is cool. And I think like Vegas is a is kind of the perfect environment for that, um, as well as like you know basically having a casino where there's a museum dedicated to himself, and you know um, has got all the gold statues, you know naked women and everything. All, that could only happen in Vegas, um, and it's pretty cool too because it's like you know the world is. Um, a, a parody of our own, but at the same time, like one of the things that's that makes it work is that Duke doesn't treat it as a parody, and it's like it, you know, that's his world. And by playing Duke Nukem Forever, you are, uh, you know, it's Duke's world, and we just play in it, and you're signing up for that. It's pretty fun. I'm from Las Vegas, and I say, kill them all. There were a lot of opportunities. Uh, you know, there's definitely um, opportunities for Duke to be driving himself uh, um, at, at larger. But like the fact that he ha when he shrunk down, that they put him in some kind of like you know to uh, toy RC car is just really cool. Um, and uh, it's it's set up really well too because when you play it in the demo, um, you you find this controller and you have to control a little RC truck to to solve puzzles in order to progress. And then you're like, oh, that's cool. And then like a little while later, you're actually getting into a toy RC car and driving it. And you're like, yeah. The arsenal of Duke 3D was really really important to uh, fans. Um, and even playing in the demo today, you can see a lot of old fan favorites. Um, you've got the pistol. You've got the Ripper, the shotgun, personal favorite, um, and you've got uh, the Devastator. You also have um, some alien weapons that you can choose, like um, AT Captain's laser or um, uh, the AT laser and so forth. But there's still a few more that are not in the demo that we think 
people will be really, really excited about and offer really cool gameplay opportunities. Um, pipe bombs as well, trip mines. Pipe bombs are awesome. We're really excited about um, people having a chance to play around with those weapons and the way that the game is balanced, like um, you're obviously going to have uh, weapons that you need when you need them, but because you can only carry two at a time, it, it gives you the chance to experience everything um, versus just like, oh no, I'm gonna take the shotgun and I'm gonna carry it through to the rest of the, th for the entire game. You can do that. It is possible. I think still my favorite thing about the game is the peeing. I just, I thought it was so funny. I, I like, I, and I just peed at every toilet I found um, uh, when I first started playing. Get this big guy back into action.